There's been so much talk recently about how important it is to find your tribe. Well, guess what? I have found your tribe. And this is really good news because if you do have a tribe, it's seat seven and it's damn competitively priced. Let's take a look. Renault introduced their SUV-like styling on the Quid, and that continues here on the Triber, but what exactly does that mean? Cladding on the slightly flared wheel arches, but don't be confused, this is just paint, no cladding there, which is a pity. It also sits on a raised rider, it's 182 millimeter ground clearance. Roof rails that aren't just cosmetic, but can actually take a load, 50 kilograms in fact, and you're only gonna get that on the Dynamic and Prestige derivatives. Different color inserts like this front and rear create that impression of a skid plate. And then it's also got a bit of that shoulder line thing going. Very subtle though. What I like is they've managed to shape out that bread loaf MPV-ness uh, on this rear three-quarter view. But this really is what all the fuss is about with the Triber, the modular configuration of their easy seats. They reckon there are over 100 configurations. I'm guessing that includes every single notch on each seat's adjustment. So let's rather just focus on the main ones. It comes standard in what they call tribe mode as a seven seater, and it's easy to flip the third row forward and just as easy to remove them completely. That then gives you life mode, which is the five seater option and gives you a massive 625 liters of luggage space. Be aware though, there is no cover for the boot area. You can also then unbolt and remove the second row of seats to create surf mode or camp mode, as you see in these pictures. Surprise, surprise. I am surprised that I can actually get in the back. I mean, I'm, I'm six foot, not the smallest oak. I thought there's no way my head's gonna fit in here, but I'm in comfortably. And what is so cool, you might hear the noise of the air con. This is something you're not gonna get in cars at this price point, is actually an air conditioning control for the second row with vents for the second row and vents in the third row, which is really, really cool. The second row of seats also recline for comfort, but they can also slide further forward to give passengers in the back more leg room. Or in the case of you taking out this third row, you've got more usable boot space. So that is a really nifty feature. They've also got 31 liters of additional storage that you're gonna find uh, around the Triber. And what again is unusual at this price point is the center console actually is cold storage and in the lower glove compartment. So you can keep your things cool as well. This is really well thought out. And can I tell you, I was quite surprised. I thought there's no ways this is gonna be practical. And, ha, huh, let me not forget the safety is critical. We're not talking little lap belts here, but they actually are proper little over shoulder for securing at the rear, which is cool. So um, there is some additional safety in terms of that, which is so vital when you're transporting uh, passengers. Nice. Specification is fantastic. Power steering, aircon for all the rows, electric front windows, remote central locking, rear parking sensors, as well as Bluetooth, USB, and a 12 volt power socket are standard across the entire range. Importantly, that also includes standard ABS with EBD and two airbags. But I would definitely recommend the mid-spec Dynamic or our range topping Prestige. These models add electric mirrors and electric windows in the rear, a 12 volt power socket for the middle row, as well as the roof rails are then added. But most importantly, you're gonna get that eight inch media nav touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Like I said, impressive specification at this price point. The 
Triber really is all about performance for your pocket. They've got a new one liter three cylinder energy engine they're calling it which produces 52 kilowatts and 96 newton meters so you're not going to be breaking any land speed records but that is not what this car is about what is important though they are claiming 5.5 liters per hundred and if we have a look at the results that Renault achieved in the economy run last year what they claim they certainly do achieve having said that though when we were driving on the on the highways it very easily gets to highway cruising speed and actually felt pretty comfortable at that speed too. But even though this vehicle does have ABS with EBD and airbags across the board, it doesn't come with a vehicle stability control system. So honestly, I wouldn't want to be swerving for something suddenly at 120 kilometers an hour. With that raised ride height, you really do feel the flick and the wallow. And uh, the minute you're going to add in weight with extra passengers and luggage, that's only going to become 10 times worse. Your tribe is where you can be 100% yourself, where you fit in, where you feel you belong, where you are valued. And that for me is something I think Renault have done really well recently. They have identified a tribe that wants to look good, is so anxious to have the freedom of mobility, but is also very price conscious. And in South Africa today, that is a very large tribe. Brendan, I'm going to bring you in here straight off the bat because you've done a lot of testing. You did quid versus go. Yes. So I know the safety thing is rightly so a real concern. Sure. I'm surprised to see you in the insert saying, geez, I'd look at buying something like <laughs> this. It looks amazing and it's well priced. It is so competitively priced. And Renault is rather well versed in the art of the MPV. Um, my first car was actually a Renault Modus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, they know what they're doing uh, and they purport that this, this model is built on a, a the strength, a more strengthened platform uh, of, of that of that quid foundation. So let's see how it does when uh, they drive it into a wall at 60 k's an hour. Yeah, it hasn't it hasn't been crashed yet. I was just happy, like I said, in the insert to see proper seat belts all around. So they have thought about things or like airbags this. in the upper models and that sort of stuff. Mm. So it it, it yeah. shows that their focus is shifting somewhat. Chad, maybe a good thing then that that little one litre naturally aspirated, which doesn't really go, they launched it in Durban, <laughs> means you're not going to go. Well, you're not going to make the 60 k's an hour for that deformable concrete barrier, are you? <laughs> not with a full load. No, not with a full load. And not up here at altitude. And I think that's the big niggle is South Africa presents some really unique conditions. First, high temperatures, which is just, you know, oxygen sapping. And then Johannesburg sits, you know, 1.6 kilometers up in the air, which is also oxygen sapping, thin air. You load it up, you hit a couple of hills, Thankfully, we're not in the case in Midlands or something of the sorts, and it's really going to feel the pinch. Uh, we've seen it with the likes of the Quid, even the Datsun Go, uh, and Go Plus, especially at a bit of a pinch with, the, you know, loaded up a bit. There is talk of a turbocharged engine, 74 kilowatts, which should be a lot better, and then, of course, won't battle with altitude sickness as such. But, yeah, it's unconfirmed as to whether we're getting it. 